never be able to measure the value of St Kilda's win last night before a crowd of 66,888. This is the Michael Tuck medal awarded to the best player on the ground and a unanimous choice to one of the game's great draw cards, the superstar himself, Nicky Winmar of St Kilda Football Club. He will join us later on in this particular program. Premierships and Brownlow medals are no strangers to our panel of Jared Healy, Kevin Bartlett, Malcolm Blight, Lethal Lee Matthews, one of our living legends, another legend, Ron Barassi, and the fossil of the game himself, the Geelong Flyer, Bobby Davis. And wasn't that great for football last night, Bobby? Rex, as an old foot football coach, I would be thrilled to think that I could have a team that could play football like that. It was just sensational. One wonders how much of the game is played from the shoulders up, and if you get four or five superstars leading kids with passion, it is quite frightening. Not only have they got passion, they've got a great amount of skill as well. Passion off the field, Lethal. Um, 1982, I think it was, 92,000 watched your side and Collingwood do battle. You would think 26,000 would be battling to fit into the car park, let alone the stadium last night. Yeah, if there were 66,000 was the official crowd and there was an extra 25,000 there in that game in 1981. I don't know where they were in 1981, but uh, it was absolutely packed house. Couldn't see any spare seats. The, uh, it was just fantastic. I think there's always a bit of a problem with the traffic, of course, with no curtain raise, everybody turns up in uh, essentially the same hour, hour and a half, but uh, fantastic atmosphere. Ron, do the alarm bells ring with you after your experience overseas watching the top football codes with the invasion of the crowd or in Melbourne, is it different people that go to the football? Well, certainly different people in Australia. Uh, we hardly have ever seen anything like that, what goes on overseas, but just the same, you'd need to sort of keep an, an eye on it. Personally, I'd, I would like to uh, see it uh, let go and just uh, give some trust to the people in Melbourne who are great sports fans and pretty fair people. So, And last night was also a special occasion with uh, St Kilda. I mean, they, they, their fans are so ecstatic after 30 years and you can't blame them. I wouldn't have alarm bells ring yet. There was no real reason. Nothing really went wrong. OK, well, Ron said just let it go. We're going to let it go with you now, Craig, because it was just Melbourne at its best on show last night to the rest of Australia. And, Craig, take us through what was a magnificent night for St Kilda and Carlton fans at Waverley Park. As you said, a huge crowd of nearly 67,000 at Waverley. And skydiver Dave Benson made a spectacular entry. And we had Kevin Johnson's centenary song. And I think 100 years. And spectacular fireworks with mental as anything. You've got to turn towards the boundary line in that time. And then the footy. Like Winmar and Kernahan tangle. Look good from here. Stephen Kernahan. I see Stephen Kernahan do that very often. I, I think he might have thought that was good. Taps it out. Pierce Soccer's one for the Blues. Off the ground from Pierce. Special goal! Everett will. Nicky Winmar again. What a goal. Allen under a bit of pressure. Everett worried Camberelli. Winmar's got a chance here. Takes it. Left foot. Look at this. Wonderful. Now Burke cops one. Nathan Burke. Sorry, sorry, sorry behind. Low. Try on Edie. Sporting probably should have taken it. Hickmott got a bit rattled. Try on Edie. This is OK. This one from nowhere at all. Once again, Gerner has to take on the two of them. And Heaver. Oh, Heaver. 30 metres out. Kicks it as goal. And Malcolm Blake like this one. Another one. Daniels. Snaps. And the Saints steal another. Kicking towards low. Sexton there to help out Silvani. Pinch. Tony Brown on his left foot. Back through another one for the Saints. Everett, Everett in the action. Good. Maybe for an Academy Award. Panic for Luke Beveridge. The Blues just ran out of legs. He's tied. Beveridge will shoot for 45. Oh, there is a sealer. 
One set to the leather, the siren sounds, the pitch is invaded. Very strong goalposts. It's all too much for this young fella. And the cup is held alive. A oh, special build-up for St Kilda with Stuart Lowe and Nathan Burke appealing to the supporters. And I'm sure the membership sales this week will reflect on St Kilda's successful pre-season. And what a great deal of anticipation is down at Linton Street. Uh, now, Bob, uh, might we have seen the last night grand final at Waverley Park? And that's not putting any dispersions on the cricket at the MCG, but uh, not without problems last night crowd-wise. I think that it's essential. The Ansett Cup has gained, well the grand final is now a great traditional game. The lead up games might be a little bit soft but the big game and certainly we would have to play to the cricket ground because you are going to fill the cricket ground a capacity all Just the time. Just before you go Gerard, uh, it may be worthwhile looking at the old style of night football where the also rans also played but uh, when the side gets knocked out in the first round it's such a long lonely trek to the first game and perhaps keeping the system going for second, third and fourth place might be the answer to keep the pre-season ball rolling? No, I think it has to be a knockout competition Rex. I think uh, one of the great things about uh, the, set, the motivation to keep going is the fact that if you do lose you end up at Mount Gambier. Mm. So I think that in itself uh, <laughs> helps a lot of the clubs uh, take this seriously. Yeah. I think the point uh, that may need to be made is that the emergence, emergence of St Kilda could well be the saviour of Waverley itself because this is obviously going to be an exciting uh, side and their 20,000 people they may have drawn next week to North Melbourne St Kilda is, uh, may turn into 50,000. Mm. Personally, I think uh, Waverley has a use-by date on it. And within 10 years, it won't be used the way it is now. It might still be some sort of oval for something, but it won't be used for AFL football. Why not, tip. Ron? Why not? Because I think the uh, competition will be down to six or eight uh, teams in Melbourne and Victoria. By You're still then. trying to get rid of teams out of Melbourne, I'm, Ron? Uh, I am trying, but I've got no power, so don't you worry about what We've I do. We've been trying for a long time. I have been, and I will keep on trying Why to. Why is that? Well, we've been through that before. Just let me get the, put the point on trying to make. If we do get down to six or eight teams, and we're playing uh, Friday... And we lose North Melbourne, Carlton and Melbourne. Your three teams are on. Uh, well, it doesn't matter whether they're my teams or not, Bob. No. Oh. Uh, uh, once you get down to that number of teams, you'll, and with Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday night football throughout the nation, you just won't need more than Carlton... Or the MC and the MCG. That's all you will need. Now, Ron, you've been trying to get rid of these teams. I've been trying to go to a break for a minute. You give me stats, and I'll shut up. <laughs> Back after the break, Nicky Wynn. Think that uh, having been to a number of grand finals in the in the last few years, I look the actual game, the the stuff beforehand, the fireworks, as you saw parachuters dropping in. It was just a great atmosphere, and I would suggest that 85 percent of the support there would have been for St Kilda. At the bounce of the ball, it was on, and it was an electrifying game. And that man that just ran across the screen ends up with the ball here. Nicky Winmar was sensational. If ever a game was probably won in the first quarter, this man set it up by himself from that wing. In a pretty good contest with Camparelli. Here's one of the youngsters, McLaren, chipped in early. And the experienced players, Burke was good early before he got injured. And all those youngsters, the class of 95, five of them played, drafted in 95, were just terrific, all contributed. Lowe was very good. And at the back, Shanahan did a very good job on Kernahan, although still managed to kick four goals. And Lee, watching the game, just your early impressions of the game at the start. Well, I thought, I mean, I think we've always thought that Carlton at VFL Park, uh, minus Craig Bradley, they're always extremely vulnerable. And when Greg Williams wasn't playing as well, this, the start was going to be critical. And I think it was the first three shots at goal by St Kilda converted into three goals. Carlton, on the other hand, their first three shots were three behinds. And so immediately St Kilda had the lead. And uh, from that point onwards, uh, Carlton threatened early in the third quarter. And it was Jason Daniels, I think, when St Kilda needed someone to steady them when they were under pressure at that point. He, uh, he was doing the tagging role on Kudafides. He pushed forward uh, into the space, and we see it here. Uh, Kudafides didn't go with him, set up the goal. Aussie Jones certainly Fantastic knew, goal, knew this, isn't it? Oh. He ran to the front of the goals rather than at the goals, which uh, opened up the angle. That was a great conversion. And then Jason Daniels from this, I think this... No, is this it? No, but it's about two minutes later, Jason Daniels crumbed the ball and kicked a goal, and all of a sudden... Killed the five in front, and from that point, they just went right away with the game. 
Lee, Jason Daniels is uh, an unfashionable type of player, but he may, all, he may almost have been the player of the series, taking Jarman out, taking Kemp out last week, and then doing a big job on Kuta Fudi. Well, I think that the, you know, the good tagging player, particularly the medium size, I think it was always likely that Daniels was going to pick up Kuta Fudi's last night, and uh, it's pretty hard to match up Kuta Fudi's with anyone of the physical dimensions, height and speed, but uh, Daniels... He did the job on Jarman, didn't he, a couple of weeks ago? And I think he's a valuable attribute to have a player within the team who you can put on a good player of the opposition and he can make sure he earns every kick. Ron, his kicking skills have been uh, criticised, but they certainly have improved uh, under your tutelage, I believe. Well, uh, he, he put a lot of work in. I mean, that is the answer. I mean, it's pretty easy to teach players how to do the thing properly, but uh, it's up to them to take it on board, but then do the work. And I mean, real, real work, uh, ABC, you know, kids, kindergarten yeah. stuff. And that's what I th uh, think he realised he had to go back to. And he, he worked on it. And good on him. I reckon he's, he's been uh, he's a big loss to uh, Sydney, by the way. Well, we do honour some of our all-time great players with medals named after them. And Michael Tuck, the game's record holder, just above our very own Kevin Bartlett. The Michael Tuck medal last night was won by Nicky Winmar. Congratulations to your cousin. and that be, must be a great thing for you personally. Yep, um, I'm uh, very excited about it. And um, At the start of the night I was just focusing on that because I knew it was going to be a big crowd and just wanted to uh, get the boys as quick as I can to settle my, settle my game and I knew that uh, Karen Pirelli was going to play on me and I watched him the week before against North Melbourne. I watched how he played and um, I focused on his, um, I mean, my good point is if I keep running, uh, I'm going to lose the taggers, so I've just got to keep running. The two-minute siren is allowing players to get off before the enthusiastic crowd gets on. Can we last night make an exception for the emotion of a success star uh, following? Well, I'd love to do a lap of honour one day, but uh, last night we just could not do that. The, uh, the crowd was on the field and, I mean, I felt sorry for the security guards, but uh, I think the St Kilda supporters are... Uh, we're very excited and uh, wanted to get out there and uh, pat us on the back. But, uh, I mean, that was last night. We're going to forget about that and focus on next week now. Nick, St Kilda, do they need to get away to the to the great start each week? Well, last year, Bob, we, we, got, we won a few games and uh, we beat Carlton. We came out and beat them last year in the Ansett Cup. And then the season started. Uh, North Melbourne um, beat us in the Ansett Cup. But the season started and we lost six straight. Yeah. And uh, you know the guys have got to focus on uh, forgetting about uh, you know what happened last night. I mean a lot of people are going to still remind us of it, of the uh, NC Cup win, and um, we've just got to um, really focus on the four points for the Premiership this year. Was it a difficult thing when the club let Lockett go, but they got the draft picks? Now that's obviously been a great part in the resurgence of. And well, you know, Tony was a big part there. For, you know, he'd been there for 12 years, and uh, 10 years I've been there, we've really uh, got on well and we're good friends. Um, but uh, you spoke about Jason Daniels. Uh, every time I went to Sydney, it was the worst trip I think I've ever had. Because, I mean, the night before, I like to let uh, my opponents have a restless night, but Jack always gave me a hard night. So <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I mean, it's good to have him back because, like, he, he did, uh, I mean, we get a lot of credit for the things that we do on the field, but. You know, you got the Shanahan, you got uh, Jason Daniels, who've uh, stopped players um, from performing well, like the Jarmans. Yeah. And um, you know, it's a really tribute back to the club, and you know, it's good uh, to have him back. Nicky, just just on this point that we're talking about, did anybody after the match on mass to the players uh, say, now let's, you know, that was great, but we have a very important match mm -hmm. next week, maybe five times as important as what we've just done, and all of that? Did, did anyone get up and say? Hey, we've got to you know, focus on straight away. Yeah, well, the players like we get to we get into a group after every every game and talk about our our um, you know mistakes we made and the things that we did well. And the guys know that uh, it's important for us to start off well next week. And I mean, Stan reminds us after the game, um, but it's good to hear the other players in the side talk about it as well. Um, well, it's up to you, uh, leader yeah. types, isn't it? Yes. But surely it's important, Ron, to enjoy the Premiership. I mean, everybody's talking about next week, which is fine, and I'm sure as a coach that's your, your role, but, I mean, Premierships don't come around all that often, and surely the players, uh, Nick, would, would have had to have celebrated it last night. Well, I think, uh, we should learn from history, too. What about uh, North Melbourne uh, 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 looking back at last year and saying uh, they think the night Premiership celebrations and the, the letdown after that uh, caused them to have a poor start? 
But I, they, they also made the preliminary final and could have made the grand final. But, I mean, these things are so precious, Nicky, yeah. that maybe well, you'd been dreaming this for uh, sure. years, winning a premiership, and, well, and everybody's trying to take your celebration away from you. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I think what should happen is that Saturday night you have to go to bed early because you finish late. Yeah. Sunday's the, today is the day, and I think winning starts again on Monday. <laughs> Nicky, just going back to a point that Bob mentioned before, that the poor starts from St Kilda, you were headed by the Eagles. I know it's the night competition, but I thought the fantastic sign for St Kilda was when you actually overtook a three or four goal advantage that the Eagles had in that game you played last week. Well, the West Coast, they, um, they're, they're a side that you always struggle against and you always, like we've got a game plan to stick to and West Coast, they really bottle it up and make it, let the sides play their way more than the sides play their own game. And the third quarter, when we started to uh, get ourselves together and get the lead back, it really showed that we, were, you know, we weren't going to stop and really play well. Okay, a worthy recipient of our award on behalf of Ansett Australia, Craig, is Nicky Winmar, and tell Australia what he's won. Yes, Rex, they are flying at St Kilda, and so too will Nicky. He's off to Cairns to stay at the magnificent Treetops Resort and enjoying the best of the far north with the compliments of Ansett. Australia. Well, there are Kaz. Uh, Kaz, you and Kelly are off. And let's see if you can make an assault on the scone eating record by Kevin Bartlett up in first class. I tell you what, you're going to have 32 by the time you get to 28,000 feet. Congratulations, you seem really hungry. You've got a good lot of kids down there and they need superstars like you and we hope you have a marvellous year. Thanks, sir. That is the Michael Tuck medalist, Nicky Winmar. And don't forget, talking footy back tomorrow night.